Good Saturday morning. Welcome back. I hope you're all ready for a, a good, safe, and sane weekend. It may look like I'm overdressed uh, this, this morning for June, but this is Southern California, and we have this thing called June Gloom. And we've got not only June Gloom this morning and a little bit of rain, but it's chilly. It's downright chilly. So, uh, and I'm an old man. So I got to keep my old bones warm. So if you think I'm unseasonably dressed, well, I am. We're uh, just getting into the uh, the invoking ritual of, uh, of Ganesh. My uh, chapter of That's What Invocation is All About. And uh, uh, yesterday we picked up it uh, right here. In order for you to appreciate the simplicity of this little ritual, you need to understand the magical dynamics of how the magician moves about the temple in ritual in order to initiate and direct the flow of energy that either invokes or banishes a specific magical force. Invoking with the sun. In order to invoke, or bring in the desired magical force, the general magical rule of thumb suggests that the magician move about the temple in a clockwise direction. As example, around the perimeter or circle of the temple space, moving from east to south to west to north, returning to the east. This movement with the sun's apparent daily path is called diosil. Standing in one place and spinning or rotating clockwise is also considered an invoking movement. Like that. Okay, I'm going to wrestle with these diagrams. The magician also can invoke by moving in a spiral direction, starting at the circumference of the circle and moving inwardly until coming to rest in the center, as if you were pulling the force or entity into the center of the temple. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Excuse me. Naturally, the power of this invoking movement is further amplified if the inward turning spiral was performed in a clockwise or diocell direction and amplified even more if the magician was also performing diocell rotations while moving along the path of the inward turning spiral. Now, banishing is against the sun. Conversely, in order to banish or send away, the general magical rule of thumb suggests movement about the temple in a counterclockwise direction, as example, east to north to west to south, returning to the east. This movement is against the sun's apparent daily path is called widershins. Standing in one place in spinning or rotating counterclockwise is also considered a banishing movement. By now you've probably surmised that you can also banish by moving in a spiral pattern, starting from the center and moving widdershins outwardly until coming to rest at the far circumference of a circle, as if you were pushing everything out and away from the center of the temple. Naturally, the power of this banishing movement is further amplified if the outward turning spiral is also performed in a counterclockwise or widdershins direction. 
and strengthened even more if the magician is also performing Widdershin's rotations while moving along the path of the outward turning spiral. Such audio-visual effects I'm capable of with my technology. Now, I call this little banishing invoking ceremony the Dance of Ganesha. And I remind the reader, like most other magical rituals, it's much easier to actually perform and visualize than it is to read about. The Dance of Ganesha. A ritual meditation. Uh, oh, I call it Lieber 108. Part 1, The Banishing. The magician sits down in the center of the circle, facing east, eyes closed. The entire ritual meditation is accomplished in the mind's eye. Now, of course, if you are a great ballet dancer, you could actually do this. But for me, it's done all in the mind's eye. Once relaxed and settled, the magician formulates in the mind a tiny living image of Ganesha, standing in his colorful glory in the center of the magician's brain. Then the tiny Ganesha bursts forth from the brain and stands on the floor directly in front of the magician. Magically, the image of the deity has now grown to about three feet high. And I have to add, you can do this with any deity of your choice. Ganesha begins to gracefully whirl Widdershins. The image of spinning Ganesha should bring delight into the heart of the magician. The magician now begins to chant the Pop Goes Ganesha mantra. While continuing to whirl Widdershins, Ganesha now begins to move Widdershins in an outward spiraling circle around the magician. It starts right in the center there and spirals around, turning Widdershins and spiraling Widdershins and moving outward till he comes to the end outside the circle like that. Again, it's easier to do it or visualize it than it is to describe it. As the spiral takes Ganesha farther and farther away from the center of the circle, the seated magician uh, circle and the seated magician, the image of the deity grows inside, in size. By the time the chant has reached the end of the first half of the first verse, Ganesh, 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 Ga. Ganesha. Ganesha's whirling spiral dance has brought him again directly in front of the magician. But now the spiral has caused, uh, has carried him to the far eastern limits of the temple room. The image of Ganesha is now about 12 feet tall. By the time the chant has reached the end of the second half of the first verse, Ganesh, 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 Ganesh's whirling spiral dance brings him again directly in front of the magician. But by now the spiral has carried him to the far eastern limits of the continent in my case, North America. 
the image of Ganesha is now many thousands of miles tall. By the time the chant has reached the end of the first half of the second verse, Ganesha's whirling spiral dance has now encompassed the sphere of the earth and the orbit of the moon. The image of Ganesha is now hundreds of thousands of miles tall. By the time the chant has reached the end of the second half of the second verse, Ganesha's whirling spiral dance has encompassed the sun and the orbits of all the planets in our solar system. Ganesha is now many millions of miles in size. By the time the chant has reached the end of the first half of the third verse, the dance has enclosed the Milky Way, and Ganesha is now hundreds of thousands of light years in stature. By the time the chant has reached the second half of the third verse, Ganesha's spiral dance has circumscribed the local group of galaxies in the neighborhood of the Milky Way. Ganesha's Ganesha is now millions of light years in size. By the time the chant has reached the end of the first half of the fourth verse, Ganesha's dance has reached so far into space, the Milky Way and our local group of galaxies looks merely like one fuzzy star in the midst of billions of other star galaxy groups. Ganesha is billions of light years in size. By the time the chant has reached the end of the second half of the fourth verse, Ganesha's spiral dance has pushed the physical universe to its inscrutable limits. There is no beyond. There is no size bigger. Space has been transcended. The concept of center and circumference has been obliterated. There is only the infinite immensity of Ganesha and the infinite smallness of the magician seated in the deity's dimensionless center. The banishing is complete. Part two, the invocation. The magician has now chanted four complete verses of the Pop Goes G Ganesha mantra. During those four verses, the ever-growing image of dancing Ganesha has banished or pushed away the entire universe by whirling widdershins in a counterclockwise spiral until it has reached the limits of space-time. There is no more universe left for the now infinite, immense, infinitely immense Ganesha to circumscribe. No outside of itself, not even empty space. When the magician has grasped the absolute immensity of this idea, then he or she is now ready to invoke. The infinitely large image of Ganesha standing before the magician now begins to gracefully spin clockwise. During the first four lines of the chant remaining, the spinning Ganesh will move in very short inward clockward arc until it enters the magician's right ear. Ganesh, 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 Ganesh. Excuse me. This movement completely drags the first quarter of the cosmos with it and deposits it inside the magician's own head. Ganesh, 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 Ganesh. 
during the second of the four lines of the chant remaining, the spinning Ganesha moves in a very short inward clockward uh, arc until it enters into the back of the magician's skull. Ganesh, Ganesh, Ganesha. This movement completely drags the second quarter of the cosmos with it and deposit it, deposits it inside the magician's own head. During the third of the four lines of the chant remaining, the spinning Ganesha moves in a very short inward spiral arc until it enters the magician's left ear. This movement completely drags the third quarter of the cosmos with it and deposits it inside the magician's own head. Right. Ganesh, 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 Ganesh. During the fourth and final of the four lines of the chant remaining, the spinning Ganesha moves in a very short inward clockward, clockwise arch until it enters in to the magician's forehead. This movement completely drags the remaining cosmos with it and deposits it inside the magician's own head. Ganesha. For a golden moment, the magician is Ganesha, the supreme intelligence, the great G. There is no outside of the magician. The invocation is complete. And that's the end of the chapter. Chapter, that's what invocation is about. Tomorrow's is a very interesting chapter. Chapter 12, The Rabbi's Dilemma. And I'm not talking about me. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe, but enjoy yourself. Be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. I hope it warms up a little bit here. Okay, bye.